small plates and tropical sips at a chic Oakland lounge, a chill place for wood-fired pies in San Francisco, and savory spit-roasted meats in Alameda. You don't even need a fork. Nope. Just ahead on Check Please Bay Area. You have to try the secret menu. What? That's what? The secret this menu? This is why you watch Check Please. <laughs> Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. Joining me at the Check Please table today are program manager, Kiana Harrison, software quality engineer, Rocky Kung, and communications consultant, Deborah Goldberg. Welcome everyone. Thank you. Hi. We kick things off with Kiana. Her favorite date night spot features Afro-Latino cuisine dreamed up by a former Top Chef contestant. In downtown Oakland, it's Sobre Mesa. The name of this beautiful, sexy place, it's Sobre Mesa, Cazzo Lounge. It's fun, it's sexy but it's also a place of relaxation and feeling like you're away from all the craziness. You're on vacation, basically. Been in the business 23 years, so been grinding for a long time, traveled the world, was in Top Chef season 18. But for me, when I built this concept, I really want to represent my roots. I want to represent the African side of my Hispanic heritage. So de Mesa in our culture is that time where your bellies are full, you're happy, you're on a different kind of level, and you really connect more with people. This is our gamba salajillo, so this is our original sauce. A lot of the dishes really represents my childhood and also my travels, but also things I want to learn for my culture. Some sexy cheese. My ancestry comes from Cameroon, so it's showcasing a lot of West African spices, West African ingredients, also Port Dominican Republic, Cuba, Puerto Rico, and also the rest of the Caribbean islands. We're all so intertwined. We're all the same people, just different islands. Plantains really represents me being Dominican, but also that ingredient that came from the motherland. Bean and cheese empanada. The empanadas is something I used to have as a kid all the time. So de Mesa, other than the food, the cocktails are the star of the show. Susan Eggett and Alex Maynard, really legends out here in Oakland, helped me create this bar program here. People think about tropical cocktails, they think tiki. This is not tiki. So it's like wood bar, cinnamon, a lot of Caribbean spices. Using like soursop, uh, cassava, banana, mango. This is coming from an actual story. It's coming from my roots. It's really special. This is definitely a late night spot. 21 and over only. So it's not for kids. It's a grown and sexy place. If you have kids, you can keep them at home and get away. As you see in our slogan, it says, came sober, left sobre. So the idea of being happy when you leave, or a little tipsy, which we can make you happy too, is too beautiful to watch. Okay, date night spot. Really, yeah. is that where you go? Oh, yeah. This is where you go for a date night. Absolutely, and and I will say, it's not just date night. Um, I think the place is so welcoming. Reservations are recommended, um, but it's good for girls' nights. We've brought family and friends there. We keep telling people about it, and so it's welcoming for everyone. I think that's what makes this place so special. Would you agree, Rocky? Absolutely. The vibe was it was popping in there. We went on a <laughs> Thursday. The yeah. decor was great. Like you said, there were people on date night. There were girl nights. There was a celebration going on. Mm -hmm. We started with the tostones, which was like a plantain chip with some andouille. I think that's how it's pronounced, mm -hmm. and a little bit of anchovy on top. And I loved how crispy it was, and how you know it, it stuck to. Together yeah. after like one bite, because sometimes you take a bite of something and it just disintegrates. Yeah. But not this time. It stayed on. The andouille was nice and savory, yeah. and the anchovy on top gave this nice oily richness to it. So we started with that, and it was divine. We do the chasones, but we don't do the additions on top. We do simple. It comes in a nice little cup, and I think there's maybe four or five, and we're just propping them in our mouths. But the picadillo empanadas yes. are fantastic. Mm -hmm. You get a flaky, crispy empanada crust. Um, the meat and the cheese. I'm actually I don't like when empanadas are super cheesy. Yeah. It's it's a good amount of meat and cheese. Um, and because it's tapas, we get the, my new favorite is the ribs, the pork oh. ribs. And 
and it comes in a bowl and it's oh. loaded with sweet rum glaze sauce. And it is char grilled, it's smoky, it's falling off the bone. Mm. And then um, of course my all time favorite. Yeah. Um, the roasted bone marrow is my favorite. I'm getting it every time. Yeah. And I actually am lucky that my fiance doesn't like it. <laughs> it's all to myself. <laughs> and so it's three stacked pieces of the bone marrow on a bed of arugula mm -hmm. and it comes with jerk to maturi and it has pickled cassava. Mm -hmm. And the best part is it has toasted sourdough bread and so you can get a little bit of scoop of the, the bone marrow and the sides and then you spread it on your bread. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, it's flavorful and I, I eat it all. The way they present it, it's almost like ceremonial. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah, and I saw also on the menu that after you're done with it, you could get a shot of rum yeah, and turn the bone into a luge. <laughs> That is hilarious. Uh, I loved it. We got to the point where we ate it all, we were fighting for the last piece of bread, and then we were shaking off the bones towards the end to get the juices in the arugula. You just arugula. need to pour the rum through. So oh, yeah. yes. There you go. Yeah. What did you have to do? I had their signature Sobre Mesa cocktail. Yeah. Mm. You could get by the glass. You could also get a pitcher. Um, I had a few glasses of that. I thought it was excellent. It wasn't too sweet. It was just really well made. They're really like craft connoisseurs. Like they know what they're doing. Yeah. I looked through the cocktail menu and immediately was drawn to a cocktail called the Blanche Deborah, who I identify with and love <laughs> dearly. Uh, it came served in a pineapple glass and it was a rum based cocktail with pineapple juice and some other kind of magic ingredient they put in there. And it was delicious that I may have ordered one or two or a few more than that. <laughs> Very bland. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but is there any other dishes that you started with? Uh, we had the meatball starter. And it was this perfectly meaty meatball on some, I think, pineapple slaw. And they had this moly esque sauce to it that made this perfect mm. balance of a little tartness from the slaw and the creaminess and the moly and that meaty, meaty goodness that <laughs> I think my partner and I ended up fighting for the last meatball because it was so <laughs> delicious. Meaty, meaty goodness. What about you, Deborah? I also had the gambas al ajillo. The waiter mm -hmm. recommended it. It was delicious. There was a bunch of fresh shrimp in uh, this really rich sauce. And they had a garlic confit and then you have these little sourdough slices too to kind of dip in. It was really rich, yeah. Would, would you go back to this spot? I totally would, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would go back on a date night or with girlfriends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would go back. And Rocky? I might go back tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a no-brainer. <laughs> you're, you're gonna see Kiana there. Yeah, I got table. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Four All right. If you would like to try Sobre Mesa, it's located on Franklin Street in downtown Oakland, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $50. Holy well, man. Yep, that is good. That looks really good. When he was a kid, Rocky says he was so grossed out by greasy school lunch pizzas that he swore off all pizza for long into his adult life. But now he's finally found a place that's turned his whole outlook around on pizza. Nestled in San Francisco's Outer Sunset, it's a casual spot, Rocky says, completely lives up to its name. Damn fine pizza. The name Damn Fine is a fun way to approach a culmination of all of our favorite things. We wanted to have cocktails and amazing food that could be elevated but also fun and playful at the same time. Now we had to be really good. That was the real thing. It had to be damn fun. Set the stakes high for ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are super passionate with this restaurant about doing the kind of pizza that we like. That we like. So we spent a really long time developing the dough. I knew it was going to be a sourdough crust, which immediately makes it like non-traditional. We do a two-day cold rise. It's not going to be that cotton candy melt in your mouth, 90-second fire type of crust. It's, it's going to be uh, something that you chew on. You have to work for it a little bit, you know? But we think that's an enjoyable experience, oh, right? It's good. Obviously, the star is the pizza, but we have a lot of supporting actors there. We've got an excellent starter's menu with olives and a seasonal grilled vegetable side. We also offer handmade pastas that are delicious. I can see in someone's face when they take a bite and I'm like, I'll watch, I'll hide and see if they like it, you know what I mean? And like, when I see that smile, I just get all warm inside. Friday nights when you're done with work, that's like everyone's ritual. They wanna have pizza Fridays, it's a thing. 
people want that joy. So um, being able to be a part of that ritual for people too is, is tremendously gratifying. It's funny, <laughs> there's people that come in and they say they're all, damn fine, is this Italian? <laughs> damn fine, all right, okay, I'll take it. No, and it's like, you're in the sunset. It's damn fine. It's damn fine, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, Rocky, let me get this straight. So you didn't eat pizza as a kid? No, I was that weird kid in school where I, mean, I think I was a little traumatized. You know that rectangle pizza that you get that <laughs> some the kind kids of waxy loved? The little waxy it. cheese on it. Mm -hmm. Some kids loved it. I was not fan, the biggest fan of it. So I grew up not really liking pizza until we uh, came across damn fine. We were walking to the beach one day because it's in the outer sunset and yep. oh my God, my life has changed on this pizza. And now I enjoy pizza. I didn't say I don't love it yet, but this place I love. So uh, what is the pizza that has changed your life? It's place? called the Alada Burrata. <laughs> it is so delicious because it comes- I'm gonna totally steal that. Go <laughs> ahead. I'll take 10% if you need to. <laughs> It's great because it's a wood-fired oven pizza, and the dough, it's this good medium ground between thin crust and thick crust, and this chewy non-bread consistency that gives you a little bounce in it in your mouth, and it comes out piping hot with a great juxtaposition of cold, luxurious burrata mm -hmm. and arugula. Yeah. And there's a garlic base on top of it, right. and I scarf that thing down. <laughs> All right, Deborah, was this damn fine? It was damn fine, and yeah. I I eat a lot of pizza. I, I lived in New York for ten years. Mm -hmm. I'm you know one of those people who are like I lived in New York. And I know pizza, but you know I know I've been to a lot of pizza places mm -hmm. in San Francisco, and I think this is like my favorite pizza place now. <gasps> yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. 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 I was so impressed. Oh like the crust, it just has this like perfect chew, and the char was perfect. You know, and the lot of burrata, it didn't have traditional tomato sauce, mm -hmm. but I didn't miss it. Like there was enough going on. The burrata wasn't too wet or sloppy, mm -hmm. just like perfect little dollops. It was a beautiful pie. Oh, yeah. I agree. I didn't know if I would like the pizza because it wasn't like the typical melted mm. cheese on top, mm. but you get the creaminess from the burrata mm. with every bite. I love that the prosciutto on top gave it the oh. saltiness. And again, it didn't have you missing what a traditional pizza tastes like. Yeah. yeah. And I, I will go back. I was already plotting on getting some of the other pizzas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, because they have other pizzas yes. and they have other dishes, don't they? Oh, yes. They do. I focus on the pizza because uh -huh. they always have two seasonal ones, but they have always a fun play on words. There's a, there was a seasonal corn pizza called mm -hmm. Dad Jokes in quotes corny. Mm -hmm. And how do you not get that? <laughs> and, and they also have a great pasta selection that was yes. also really good. We had the orecchietti one night. We also went with my friends who had two kids that were a little picky on their pizzas and they were happy to make more traditional pasta sauce base and she, they want to cheese. The kids want to cheese and they made it and those kids also gobbled it up. Mm -hmm. And the kids said, damn fine. That was damn fine. Well, <laughs> I don't know if they want to say damn fine. I'm like, <laughs> don't read that part. <laughs> we had the Bucatini marinara, mm. which was surprisingly good. I loved it. It came out in a plate and it was nice and the color of the pasta sauce turned me off at first. It's not your typical zesty tomato mm. sauce. It was savory and my only wish was that there was more Parmesan cheese on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also got the uh, shishito peppers. And I feel like you can't really go wrong with shishito mm -hmm. peppers. What was unique about this is there was crushed black olives and then salt. And I don't like spice, but you had a little bit of heat to it, but it wasn't spicy, it was nice. We finished everything. We Did got you wash day. it down with anything? Oh yeah, yeah. we got the damn fine spritz. Mm, preach. <laughs> <laughs> The spritz was refreshing and mm -hmm. it had the Prosecco, it was bubbly, it was mm -hmm. airy, and it was just a beautiful drink as well. And small little list of wines, but very well chosen yeah. and mm -hmm. beers. What about you, Deborah? Wash it down I with any? I did. I had the Shady Day, which, Ooh, you know, mm. Outer Sunset, it's you perfect. Know. I love a Shady Day. <laughs> <laughs> it had mezcal, amaro, lime. Uh, just a really smooth cocktail. Mm -hmm. uh, their cocktail program is really solid there, I thought. Yeah. Any other recommendations? Uh, yes, okay. they have a pizza called the Mushroom Dream, which is just full of mushrooms. And I know mushroom is a divisive subject on pizza, but <laughs> I love it. I think there's some enoki in there, and there's mm -hmm. some, I think chanterelles. I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's delicious. It sounds it's, great. It's great. <sighs> and another one that they have is called the Sausage and Sage, which is more of a traditional pizza. It's tomato sauce base, a lot of fresh sausage. I have that one too. Perfect. Oh my God, so good. Very fennel forward. Which mm. I also loved how you can get sides to go with the pizza, like dipping sauces. They have your traditional ranch, uh, Calibrian chilies and oil, mm. if you want it a little spicier. 
and then a hot honey. You can just drizzle it on there, mm -hmm. add such a nice little like sweetness, but also a little bit of heat. I mean, it's my new favorite combo. My kind of hot honey. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have anything else, Deborah? We had some sides, some seasonal vegetables they had mm. on the menu. I wasn't like overly impressed, but I was yeah. like, a pizza restaurant doesn't need to do everything huh. great. Like their pizza is amazing. So I definitely go back for that. So don't worry about the sites. Mm -hmm. Forget yeah. about it. Forget yeah. about Just it. Forget about Focus it. on the pizza. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about affordability? I thought it was a good value. I mean, mm -hmm. this isn't like the cheapest pizza place ever, but yeah, I would pay more for, wow. for this Wow, don't pizza. tell them that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 if you would like to try Damn Fine Pizza, it's located on Judah Street in San Francisco's Sunset neighborhood. The average tab per person without drinks is around $45. Many of us tend to pass over roast chicken on the menu when dining out, opting for flashier entrees. Well, Deborah says that would be a big mistake when it comes to the rotisserie chicken at her favorite restaurant. Soaked in a Japanese koji marinade, then lovingly slow roasted on a spit, this juicy bird has become her go-to dish at Alameda's Spinning Bones. The name of the restaurant is Spinning Bones. It was a rotisserie restaurant, so. Yeah, no. Kind of tongue in cheek as far as bone spinning. Literally, that's what it is. And I had a little rhyme at the beginning and I said sticks and stones and spinning bones, and that was kind of going to be the fun tagline <laughs> that we never used. Brussels and prime rib. Mike and I have been cooking for a long time together. Yeah, this is our fourth restaurant together for the last 15 years or so. Our backgrounds, our parents are Japanese and also Hawaiian. Kind of just a happy coincidence. And so you see a lot of that food on there, but you know, we've both lived in California most of our lives, so it's California cuisine to us. I think the most unique thing about our food is we marinate all of our meats in shiokoji. Take the shiokoji. Shiokoji is fermented rice that we inoculate here, and then we add that to the pork shoulder, the underbelly of the chicken, and we spatchcock the chicken to let it dry out. Spatchcock it butterflies it, so it gives it the chicken two sides. So we can put it on the rotisserie, flat it out, and it keeps the skin nice and golden and crisp. You let the meat baste its own juice. It'll baste itself as it spins. It's a gas rotisserie, so it's a very clean flavor. It lets the flavors of the meat kind of shine. All right, Ron, here's a cucumber cooler. Alameda, in general, since it's an island, it's a fiercely loyal community that we have on here, which I like. And the reason why we've built the open kitchen design is that so we can see everybody. Our neighbors, you know, our people, and literally feed the community. Yeah. And so that's really the most rewarding part about building the restaurant. So Alameda is becoming quite the spot for restaurants. It is, totally. Uh, we moved uh, during the pandemic, um, you know, when things were still shut down, uh, but we were always on the hunt for like good new restaurants. We found so many in Alameda, but the one that stands out and is still my favorite is Spinning Bones. Mm. Yeah, my go-to, the Koji chicken, is just so succulent and you get pretty much half a bird on the plate. Mm -hmm. The skin is just perfectly crispy, it's super juicy, and I often get the chicken with ribs too. Mm. It's called the double dutch, which is just like, fun. yeah, <laughs> you get kind of two for one there. It comes with the roti, the flatbread that is just so good, mm. uh, chimichurri. They make all their sauces in-house, chimichurri, and then they also do uh, garlic jalapeno sauce. I love that. So yeah, I love to kind of assemble it in like a little taco, but it's definitely enough to share. So we always get other stuff on the side too. And what did you have, Rocky? Well, we started with the corn fritter. Oh, yeah. Well, yes. Well, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. well yes. so mm, <laughs> yes. it was this wonderful savory combo because it comes mm. with a strawberry dipping sauce. Yes. You're like, mm. you don't think the two things would go you together? Yeah. Is this dessert? Yeah. Is this game dessert? changer? Yes. Why not? We always, we always get those. Oh, it was yeah. so good. The corn fritters. Oh my yeah. gosh. I, I think I've I've been thinking about them since we left. Mm. But they were bite-sized, and I'm generally not a corn person, yeah. and so I was surprised by myself. I took a small bite, and it reminded me of a corn souffle. Mm -hmm. There was a sweetness, there was a corn kernels, mm -hmm. and as soon as I took that first bite, mm. Hi, can we get another yeah. one, please? <laughs> but again, like you said, Rocky, the strawberry jam, yeah. it's an unsuspecting side. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I want more. I will go back just for those. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the corn fritters. I love it. So after the corn fritters. We had the chicken fat rice, which was luxuriously fatty, but not greasy. Nice. I could have had a whole bowl of that, but I would also <laughs> go back for the corn fritters and the chicken fat rice alone. Did you have any meat? 
of course. Well, I, 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 <laughs> spinning bones. I have to have some kind of meat, like Deborah said. It's mm-hmm. meat centric. So yeah. we did have the koji chicken also, and I'm a dark meat fan. Mm. The skin on the chicken was impossibly crisp. That sounds. Great. I don't know how they got it that yeah. crispy, and then the dark meat was super juicy. Oh, it was good. great. Uh, I did find the white meat just a tad dry, mm. but I did order that chimichurri, mm. and it just made. I, we gobbled it up. Yeah. We had the. I think it was the smashed potatoes, oh. and that was a nice dish. There is a romesco sauce and a sour cream, I believe. Um, and it, there's a creaminess. The potatoes were super crispy and it was soft on the inside. I just wish it had a little bit more salt, mm. um, but it was pretty good. And I actually gave up chicken, and so oh. I opted for the St. Louis pork ribs. Ooh. I generally like my ribs to be char grilled. I like them falling off the bones. Yeah. These weren't that. And so I did enjoy the sweet and tangy barbecue sauce mm-hmm. that I was dipping in. Mm-hmm. And I did find myself going for the pickled slaw on the mm-hmm. side. It was light, refreshing, mm-hmm. and a little bit of sweet. Mm-hmm. Well, next time you guys go, you have to try something off the secret menu. <gasps> what? <That's-> what? <laughs> Secret menu? This is why you watch Check, Please, to find out about the secret menu, which will no longer be secret oh, okay. now. Yes. <laughs> the secret is out, but every day on social media, they post a secret menu. They, they come up with like the wackiest, kind of tongue-in-cheek named items on the menu. You're not going to find this anywhere else. They're just having fun in the kitchen and experimenting, mm. and everything I've had has been super delicious and just like nothing I would ever think of or make at home. So yeah, definitely check that out before you go next time. Oh, <laughs> we'll do. Secret we'll menu. Do. You got it. If If you would like to try Spinning Bones, it's located on Park Street in Alameda, and the average tab per person is around $30. (laughs) And now, reporter Cecilia Phillips brings us more Bay Area Bites you've just got to try. What is this place all about? The Tasty Mom Market is exactly that. We're tasty, we're a mob, which is mobile, and people, and we're a market. We're a marketplace for trucks to operate, a good spot for people to hang out, enjoy the food. There you go. There you oh, go. School. We have different events. Uh, tonight we got the paint party. Picasso over here. <laughs> as well as a comedy. Meet my second ex-husband. <laughs> so we really just want to make it a cozy spot. So what is the name of the truck? The name of the truck is El Bombero 408. But these are really amazing with all the people that I see. Oh, it's a fire truck. No, it's a food truck. <laughs> so what did you make today? The alambre. Okay, it's, so what is alambre? It's a Mexican traditional place in all of the Korea's in Mexico. In this time it's with al pastor meat. It's marinated pork, a steak, a carne asada, and Mexican salsa, chorizo. So show me how to do it. It's like this. You take oh, the tortilla okay. like this. Oh my that's what makes Oh wow. So this is very uh, messy. Cheers. <laughs> Salud. Mmm. So good. You don't even need a fork. Nope. <laughs> so it's salchi pulpo. What does that mean? Salchi means salchicha, see? Sí? Yeah. Salchichas and papas. <laughs> yeah, papas. So potatoes and sausage. And why do you call it pulpo? Because we cut the many parts. When it's fried, they eat similar octopus. Yes. Many little fingers. The little fingers <laughs> for the octopus. Yeah, so salchi pulpo. Oh, my little, little octopus pulpo. <laughs> and it is steaming. Cheers. <laughs> That's a tasty salchicha. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> So the latera means from the earth, so we're 100% vegan food, uh, specializing in Mexican food. So this is jackfruit. Jackfruit is cut young, so it's not sweet, and we use it in place of either chicken or pork. And this right here, this is the jackfruit asada fries. So it's like nachos, but fries. And cashew crema. Ooh, cashew crema. All right, we're coming in for a bite. Me too. (laughs) It's delicious. Don't eat the homies. Don't eat the homies. Tastes okay? So what did you make here for me? This looks delicious. It's a pineapple express burger. I got two three ounce patties smashed with just some seasoning, teriyaki sauce, a little pineapple and bacon. And a little sriracha for a kick. So do people ever tell you pineapple, you know, doesn't belong on a pizza? Does it belong on a burger? I think it does on a burger. I'm not sure about pizza myself. Okay, here we go. (laughs) All right, cheers. Mm. Pineapple definitely belongs on a burger. I enjoy it. See you guys next time. Yeah, thank you. 
I have to thank my fantastic guests on this week's show, Kiana Harrison, who raves about the roasted bone marrow at Sobre Mesa in Oakland, Rocky Kung, who eats a lot of arata pizza at Damn Fine in San Francisco, and Deborah Goldberg, who's crazy for the Koji chicken at Spinning Bones in Alameda. Join us next time when three more guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Oh, cheers. cheers. Woohoo! Yay. Yay. You guys are fabulous. Mm. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by. It's our food rescue program that feeds people, not landfills. It's a thousand things. Big and small. Sutter Health. Total Wine and More offering delivery and curbside pickup options with over 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 4,500 spirits. Customers can shop in store, online, or on our app. Fog Harbor Fish House is a local family owned restaurant offering sweeping views of the San Francisco Bay. Fog Harbor serves fresh, 100% sustainable seafood featuring specialties including roasted shellfish platters, chipino, and oysters. Located at Pier 39 in San Francisco, reserve at fogharbor.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child, with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check Please Bay Area. Magic word, everybody say it loud. Bone marrow. Bone, Bone marrow. marrow. Bone marrow. <laughs> You can get this hot honey, which Ooh. is like, mm, love a hot honey. Mm, don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> I always go for the chicken fried steak. Is it a chicken or a steak? Come on. <laughs> a little bit of bum column A, a little bit of bum column B. <laughs> a lot of burrata. A lot of burrata. <laughs>